Hey guys, it's Jen here from Genji Photography. I wanted to quickly show you how I batch edit. I know that we're all super busy right now and anything that can save us time is muchly appreciated. Um, so I thought I'd do it. You know, I'm really like, I've been able to stay caught up on editing so well this year. And I definitely think this is why. Um, so I thought, why not share it? And hopefully it'll help somebody else out with their editing. Um, so first off, I do run portraiture on almost every image. So I do like to have that as an action. Um, so to create an action, you just go click this little folder to create a new set. And then you name it. Let's just name it skin. And then just beside that, there's like a blank piece of paper. So click on that to create a new action and then just name that one. And also like, um, you can do it now or you can do it later on. You, while you're creating the action, you can give it a function key, which is really nice. So that uh, say if you did portraiture, created this action and selected F2, then all you have to do is hit F2 and it'll run the action, which is so nice. Um, but we don't need to do that today. So today I'm just going to hit record. Now this little red button is showing me that it's recording the steps that I'm doing right now. So um, anything that I do until I press stop is going to be recorded in that action. So with the background layer, I need to duplicate it. Um, because I don't like to do anything to the background layer. Um, I always like to do it on, as a duplicate or just a new blank layer. So to duplicate it, you can do, um, well, a few things, but you can right click and duplicate layer, or you can just drag it down here to that blank piece of paper. And that's how I do it. Um, so there we go. That's our background copy. Um, you could rename that too if you like, but let's not do that in this action. So background copy and then filter image nomic portraiture, run the portraiture. So you can see that's very heavy on the baby and on the backdrop. It's, it's everywhere. So I normally lower the opacity to about 40%. Um, and then I also create a layer mask so that I can brush off the parts that I don't want portraiture on. So the parts that I don't want to lose the detail, like the eyelashes, the lips, the nose, the fingers. Um, so this would be my action then. Um, so I stop this and then because I'm going to run this on every image, just to show you how I batch it, um, I'm going to delete this for now, since we have our action, our action is all made. So I'm just going to delete. Now I have five images open. They're just random images images that I selected, not necessarily ones that I'm actually going to fully edit. But anyways, um, if I want to run portraiture on all five of these images, I'm just going to go file, automate, batch, and then I'm going to select the action set. So it was skin, and then I'm going to run the action portraiture. Um, Let's say if I wanted to um, run like a, a greater than Gatsby action, um, like this one, this one is a really popular one for me. I do it on almost every image, so I could do that. But right now I want to run it on skin and then portraiture. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click OK. And now it's going to, everything that we did in that action, it's going to do here on all five of the images. It's going to create that mask so that now all I need to do is I need to grab 
my black brush and mask it off of all of the pieces and and actually I do that on on every image just to mask it off really quickly one second here see how quick it is so that just ran portraiture on all five images created the mask so that I can mask it off and it's also reduced the opacity so I don't have to do any of those steps now I can go and grab my black brush at 100% opacity and just take it off the areas that I don't want it to be. Um, so, so that's how I would do portraiture. And then, so I would mask it off, I'd flatten it. And then potentially, potentially, um, I do that to all five images just really quickly and then I can go and run another action if I wanted to. Um, another one that I really like is Task from Aaron Tools Paintbox. So I could do that. Um, and then you can see here because I didn't flatten it it's got it right on top there, which is fine. Um, just some actions do require the image to be flattened, so you're gonna get a lot of error messages if you don't flatten the, the image before you run an action. So that is batch editing while the images are open. Um, another person had mentioned, well, what do you do, like how do you place your watermark? Um, I do have an action for that. Basically, I recorded my action just the same by going to folder and then hitting a new thing and naming it. And then while it's recording, I just went file and then place. And I placed my watermark just like I normally do on Im any image. Um, and then I stopped recording and that created my action so that now I can do the same thing. I can just run my action to include my watermark on on all the open images if I want. Um, now if I didn't if I didn't have the images opened and I already had them saved in a folder but I wanted to go and save them all for web or convert them all into black and white or anything like that I could do that as well. Um, and I'll show you that in just a minute. For now I'll just show you well, what if I'm done with all of these five images? Do I have to save them individually? Well, no, I don't. I can just go <clears throat> into file and then scripts, image processor, and um, use open images is selected. You can also select another folder if you want to do something that's not open. Um, and then where do you want to save it to? So you can save it to um, so this one is Kaden. I know my folders are a mess. Uh, Kaden. Okay, so I can save it to Kaden's folder. Um, if I wanted to here, I could reduce the file size, but I save it as JPEG. Quality 12. I don't resize to fit. I convert it to sRGB. Even though you can see down here, I'm still in sRGB. Um, and then if I wanted to run an action to save for web or turn it black and white or anything like that, I could do that. But for this one, let's say I'm happy with the way these images are and I just want to save them. All I have to do is do the use open images, save in whatever folder I want and run. So I make sure run action is not selected because I don't want to convert it to black and white. Um, and I just run it. So this is going to save all of these images now. So you can see how much time this is saving by not having to save every image individually, by being able to 
um, run an action as you're saving, especially if it's something that you use a lot. Um, like black and white, like converting to black and white is just so easy now. If I wanted to go and save all of Caden's images to black and white so that I can load them in his gallery, then I would just go scripts, image processor, and then I would, instead of use open images, I want to select his folder where his images are. Um, so I'd go Caden. Okay, and then this time I would run the action. So now this is going to um, open up all of Caden's images and turn them to black and white. Um, so now I can just easily, oh, and he probably has some black and whites in there already. Um, yeah, so it's going to duplicate some of those. But anyways, you, you get the point. Um, so now he's going to have all of his images in black and white and color. I can just easily load the gallery um, onto my website or wherever I want. Um, it also makes it like so much easier for blogging um, because you can open a client's full gallery and run your save for web action um, and not have to do it individually. So I think that covers batch editing pretty well. Hopefully it can save some people some time. Have a good night.